Hi guys, not sure who to main? Well today we're gonna find out if you should main Bloody Queen. So there are some pretty basic things about Bloody Queen. As far as hunters go, I feel like she's probably one of the more easier hunters to learn in the game. She is a single hit hunter, so you don't have to worry about you know doing like cool tricks with her or trying to focus on getting double downs. With Bloody Queen, I feel like she's probably one of the only few hunters that remains consistent as far as her abilities go. There are a couple things that I don't like about her. Um, for one, being a single hit hunter in the current meta, you're going to have an easier time stuffing people whether they're coming to the chair or if you're trying to get like a super hook down. I feel like two hit hunters are really good in that category because it makes for faster chase. In comparison to two hit hunters with Bloody Queen, even though she's a single hit hunter, her mirror allows you to basically prevent survivors from transitioning away into other areas as well as just keeping them kind of remotely in the same place. When you use a mirror, whether it's on like a short map or a long map, if you're putting yourself, your mirror image in front of the survivor, you, you might be able to get either a quick hit or you can probably just let your mirror linger for a bit before you get closer to the survivor. So I'm going to get into a custom just really quickly to, just to show you the tricks that you can do with her mirror. She's pretty straightforward I feel like and in my opinion I think she's probably one of the more what I like to call one dimensional hunters where there's not really anything super difficult with her other than just you know player placement of the mirror and trying to just get down your depth perception. I also feel like with Bloody Queen there isn't just like she's not really hard to use if that makes sense. So here I'm going to go ahead and turn off the AIs and then I'm just going to go to a survivor. So when you're near someone, how you, ideally you want to use the mirror, you never really want to use it when you're up and close. It's mostly when the survivors are trying to either make it towards like a window or a pallet or if you just spawn them at the beginning of the match and you're trying to just scope out. I don't really like to just toss my mirror out because then if my prediction's way off, then I just end up wasting my mirror. So what you want to do is if you have a general idea of where the survivor is and you, you know, you've seen them, you have a little bit of a uh, line of sight, you want to place your mirror accordingly and then whack them. Now this can be a bit difficult to do with her, with her mirror hitbox. It's a bit bigger than her normal attack hitboxes. So with the mirror, what you want to do is since the hitbox of the mirror is pretty much like bigger, you want to swing it as you're hitting. So like when you're turning, you just want to swing with it. That way when you swing, your hitbox covers a wide more area of range. It's kind of similar to playing Geisha where the hitbox, it, again, it's a little bit, it, it has a more, it has more of a chance to hit the survivor when you cover more range with it. So here, I'm going to land myself properly. I actually kind of forgot what he was. Oops. Uh, okay. So here you're going to turn and swing just so you know, you get like a better better range, better area of damage that you have. Switch over. There are also some other things you can do. A lot of times if your mirror is like a little bit off, so let me explain. So with the mirror image, if you're a little bit far from someone and you don't really, you know, have, you're not really within range, you can easily just switch and then hit them if you're worried about, you know, missing an attack or missing a strike. Now with the mirror, the other trick you can do, um, with full presence, it doesn't really change anything a whole lot. You're, you're able to kind of just toss out your mirror a bit farther and then as well as you're able to angle it. So again earlier, let's say I'm looking for a survivor. I saw that this cypher just popped and I'm going to put my mirror like right here. Doesn't see them. If you, have, if you think someone's by your mirror, you push this button over here on the right side and then it'll take you to where their position is at. So like I said, if your mirror, you know, it's a bit off, or if you're worried about it, or if you're just out of range completely, you can push this button off to the side, and then whack them. I don't even think I'm... Even... Yeah, so just a little bit off. That's the other tricky thing. Um, her mirror ability is really easy to use. It's more so just getting your depth perception down. I honestly feel like that's the hardest thing with her, where if you're kind of far away, it can be pretty difficult to be as accurate as you want to be. So like I was saying, I feel like depth perception is kind of just like the hardest thing to learn with her. I still have trouble with it every now and then. So here, then boop. Yeah, it, it'll take some practice, but once you get a feel for her and how her depth perception works, then, or like how, once you have like that internal clock of just telling yourself, oh, okay, like this will be a hit. So let's see. So I'm gonna check, let's say I'm gonna check 
this cipher over here just to see if anybody's to buy it. I'll push this button. If there's nobody nearby, it's just going to save the symbol, no target to turn to, and you'll just go and pull down. Again, full person doesn't really change up a lot with her mirror. It mostly just increases the range that you're able to do, or it increases the range that you're able to just toss out your mirror. Again, I still want to look for somebody because I have tinnitus, not sure from where. I'm going to check this cipher over here. I'm going to turn it. Okay, near somebody. Don't know if in the back or if they're in the front. Um, and then you'll get a little outline once you're near a survivor just to kind of help you out. So let's try this again. Gonna look at this cipher. See, oh, direct hit maybe? Nope. Nope. Let's see. Yeah, see, so like I was saying, the depth perception is kind of difficult. Let's see how close that was. Okay, so in this case, I was just a little bit farther, but you get the general idea. Okay, so here we're going to go into a rank match. Right now, I'm going to ban Seer, just because, like I said, Seer is probably, if not her greatest threat, besides, you know, support and dealing with some other harassers. Now, I'm playing Bloody Queen on rank just to kind of show you guys what her mirror ability is able to do and just how she works. The ban Sangria, so that's fine. You know, not really going to hurt me. Now, with Bloody Queen, what you're going to want to do, at least in my experience, you don't really need Control Freak just because... She's not really like a campy hunter or a stuffing character. It's pretty hard to be consistent at getting double downs with her when someone comes to the chair. So your best bet is to try and get hits on other people when you have someone on chair with your mirror and spread damage accordingly. So we're gonna be using wanted order. What this does, it if you're not if you're unfamiliar with this trait, basically when you have someone on chair, it shows you the outline of a survivor. Any survivor random, sometimes it's the rescuer, sometimes it's person who's all on the opposite side of the map decoding, and other times it's the person that you exactly want to be watching. So here, I'm going to be putting on uh, Berserk, and then I'll just put on Deer Hunt. And then we're going to go ahead and go in this match. Right now, we got Coordinator, Lawyer, Prisoner, and Ada. So characters like Ada, Perfumer, Seer, people that are just really good at eating up hits, they hurt Bloody Queen a lot, just because you're not really... With those types of characters, you're not really able to get quick downs, and if you chase them as your first chase at the beginning of the match, you're not really going to get that far. You want to go after someone who won't take too long to knock down, as well as someone who probably won't benefit from any speed boost. So if you're chasing someone that has flywheel or if you're chasing someone that has tie turner, odds are you're gonna pretty you're gonna kill them pretty quickly in comparison to chasing to chasing down a priestess who has, you know, broken windows. So here we're just gonna wait for this match to start so I can show you guys how to play her. Okay, so right here I'm spawning inside the factory on Leo's memory, which is fine. My mirror is going to be on cooldown for a little bit just at the start of the match. I know someone spawns over here at Gokkite, as well as someone spawns over there towards Moongate. Here I have Tenai's pretty early, so I want to see if it's somebody around here or if they're hiding. Just to kind of see. Sometimes I'll go around this little crevice. I still have it, so they're within. No, okay, they it's gone. Let's see, I can't tell if they're going to Factory or if they're going over here. If I get to Nice right here, they'll be at the Cypher. Okay, bet. So right here. Will be Coordinator. I'm going to try and bait her gun. There we go. So even if you miss your mirror, like I said, you're able to kind of just prevent people from rotating away. Because otherwise they risk the chance of getting hit by her mirror image. Why Why is she... Okay, I was like, you girl, you better not be running back. Um, so again, here, she's probably going to palace spam. I'm going to see if I can get a hit right here. Nope, that's okay. Right here. The cool thing about her mirror is when you sandwich people like that, there really isn't a place for them to go, which is why Flywheel comes in handy for survivors sometimes. Here, I'm going to chair her right away. I got a decent kill a quick, as far as like timing con is concerned. So I'm going to chair her right here. Let's see, and I've wanted order on Lawyer, who's all the way over at Factory, so I'm going to try my best to get a quick hit on him. Um, like I said, BQ's not really known for her camp, so it's kind of difficult to stuff survivors at the chair. So you can get away with using the mirror to try and hit somebody. Let's see, I'm going to wait till the outline turns a bit white. Yeah, just out of range for him, unable to get the hit, unfortunately. So my mirror will go and cooldown, but it's okay. Um, so like I said... I'm gonna try and aim for a terror shock. If I get it, great. If not, oh well. Okay. In this case, I got it, so we're fine. He waited a little too long. As a result, he got punished for it. When you have multiple people on chair, or if you've already eliminated one survivor, wanted order will not appear again. That's why I don't really use wanted order on others on other hunters, just because I feel like sometimes it's a bit of a wasted trait. Stuffed her. 
just gonna force her to save again. Use my blink. Okay, so I'm gonna go pick up Coordinator because she's dead on chair. They're trying to heal her, it's smart. So she'll be injured. Okay, I'll pick her up, and then I'll go back and hit Luca. Here, he's probably gonna expect me to switch, so he might get up. This might be a little bit tricky. Yeah, okay, so here I'm gonna have to switch, which is fine. He might shock me and then make it to this pallet. Okay, he might loop this area for a bit, which is fine. Because when they loop certain areas, you can't use your mirror to kind of just, you know, get a quick hit. Or at least prevent them from... Okay, and he had flywheel, so that works out for me, which means now I can use my mirror. I can also just bait it. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and use it since I'm not able to hit him. going to switch. He's already been on chair, so... Um, his countdown will be at half instead of at the beginning since I chaired him earlier. With Coordinator gone, they didn't really have like a good survivor to basically guarantee a safe rescue. Um, honestly, the Terror Shock on Luka kind of helped out a bit in the sense that since Bloody Queen isn't really able to stuff characters consistently at the chair or survivors consistently at the chair, it really just means that she has to put in a lot of work to receive damage or to deal damage from other people. Try to get a hit on the Ada. Not able to, but it's okay. Here, I'm just gotta make sure that I can hit the Luca properly. Lawyer my body block right here at the door. Shot came back up. Just trying to completely ignore the lawyer. Force healing. So, with force healing, with Bloody Queen, it's a little bit difficult. Because she is... Okay, I was going to switch to Patroller just to kind of prove a point. But because she is a single hit hunter, it makes things like... It makes things like Force Healing pretty much difficult for her to deal with. A strategy that I like to use is I switch to Patroller. That way, when I switch to Patroller, it forces them to get off. Now, obviously, there are a little bit of um, contingencies with it. If it's only just one person... If it's only just one survivor going in um to force heal then you're fine if it's two survivors then it's kind of tricky here can i can i get him thank you okay ada got out but it's fine one's a win pick him up chair him easy with three like i said with um with Harassers, you're... Well, actually, I don't think I talked about this yet. With Harassers, Bloody Queen's Mirror, you're actually able to knock down the majority of them, with the exception of Ford. Because you're able to knock down Harassers, um, and what I mean by that is, like, you can distance yourself away from them and use your mirror to get in hits on them without risking, like, getting stunned by any of their abilities. Like, if you're if you're a bit away from someone and you're going up against, like, Antiquarian or Prospector or... Um, uh, professor, like, their abilities will have no effect on the mirror image, so if you're, if you distance yourself properly, and then use your mirror to get in hits and deal damage, you're realistically going to be able to get quick kills at a time. So, as far as the character itself, as far as Bloody Queen herself, I really do like her, and I honestly think, like I said, she's pretty easy to learn once you, you know, get a feel for how far your uh, mirror is able to travel, and as far as uh, my total final thoughts and opinions on her, I honestly think that she's pretty great. Not a bad hunter if you're wanting to start out, just be mindful if you do plan on maining her and playing her seriously. Uh, just might, just watch yourself um, right now with the current meta, the support and harassing right now is a big thing. And so if you are able to get quick kills, great. And like I said, she's not really known for her camp. She doesn't really have a good camp potential. She mostly just signs with her chase as well as just applying pressure across the map. So overall, my final grade that I'm going to give her is I'm going to give her the ranking slash grade A. 
just because I think that, yes, she is a really good hunter. She's really easy to use. Once you get a feel for her distance with the mirror, as well as just kind of how she feels and getting used to that mirror hitbox, I honestly think that she's a great hunter. You could benefit a lot from uh, using her, as well as just if you're looking for a stable hunter to keep maining pretty much for like ever because I don't think they're I don't think Nadis is gonna adjust her or give her a rework of any kind. I honestly think she's one, probably one of the most consistent hunters throughout uh, over like over the many seasons of this game. Nothing really too you know extreme with her. She's pretty much like what I like to call just one dimensional hunter. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're looking for a character and you really like Lady Queen and the playstyle with her, then by all means go for it because I honestly think she's a really good. Character. Uh, so yeah, that'll be it for this video. Hope you guys uh, learned a lot from the video. Hope this helps, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.